Hey, After Buzzers, welcome to tonight's episode of Shark Tank After Show. We are talking season eight, episode 23. We've got Thompson T, Wallet Buckle Roomy Spice, and of course, good old People's Design. And best of all, we have a very special guest joining us in studio. Stay, stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you're looking at me wondering where the heck is Zoe Hewitt, she is not here, but she will be coming back soon. I am Constance Dunn. You can always find me on Twitter or Instagram at Constance Dunn. But in the meantime, I have an amazing guest. He is a Shark Tank VIP. If you've been watching Shark Tank forever, if you might want to wind back to season four, episode 23, you might have seen this guy. Nate, introduce yourself. Nate Holtzafell. And here I am. Yeah, I'm, you. yeah, and I think, I'm, it's, I think it's episode twenty-two. It, yes, season four, episode twenty-two, is it? I think it was twenty-three. It might be twenty-two. Yeah, and you know. were excellent. You're one of the big success stories to come out of Shark Tank. Yeah, you know that I made the most out of that crazy show. Most people don't realize what Shark Tank really is mm -hmm. and what it is. It's a, it's an opportunity to springboard yourself into right. something else. But a lot of times people see it as an arriving moment. You know, uh -huh. I'm here. I've done it. We're at Disneyland, you know, and right. everything's done, but it's really just a starting place. But if you know how to work it and, and go from there, you can really turn into something. Of course, you know, having a fabulous business partner out of it right. and some real cool friends and you know, I get along with all the sharks personally. It's 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 awesome. So Yeah. And of course, you well, tell tell us about your deal if you kind of remember. Who did you partner with? You know, I went in there and made a deal with Damon John. Uh -huh. uh, you know, that's who I wanted. I I'd never seen Shark Tank before. And um, I remember I was telling somebody about this, you know, this belt business I wanted to right, do. Right, right. And uh, they said, you know, you should take this on Shark Tank. And I thought, oh, this is like some kind of an aquarium show, or like, right, why? Right, right. I don't understand why. Why is that a good idea? <laughs> I don't even understand. What's weird? And they said, no, no, you check it all out. So I went home, I googled it, uh -huh. watched five episodes, and then I watched the episodes. And the fifth episode <laughs> I watched was the one where Damon. Um, uh, made a deal with Billy Blinks Jr. and he followed the guy out of the room and said, "No, I don't, I don't think you understand what you're missing." Uh -huh. And I and I zoned in on Damon. And I said, "You know, this guy's the right person for me for a lot of reasons." Yeah, I and, love uh, him. I do too. I yeah, liked him. Yeah. And so I, I thought about that, whatever, you know. And, and I just said that that's that's who I'm going to get a deal with. And you had it in your head. Yeah, yeah, I had in my head that I was going to get a try to get a deal from him. My biggest concern is that he wasn't going to like me because like I'm a goofy like. I, mean, I don't even drink. I'm boring, right? Right. And he parties and does all this cool stuff. And I thought, well, he and I don't have a lot in common. But Cuban and I have a lot in common. Right. I could probably get a deal there. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, strangely enough, you know, Cuban was waiting there to see if Damon was going to give me a deal. And if he hadn't, Cuban would have. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that you kind of miss off, uh, you know, when, you, when they edit these shows. Because, you know, you go and you pitch for right. an hour. Sometimes right. two hours. Yeah. That's right. And they edit it down to five, six, seven, eight minutes. So it's entertaining, engaging. Because exactly. listening to us talk for an hour would be terribly tedious. Uh huh. And, uh, of course, that's why you see so many people on Shark Tank, too, who kind of have those dumb looks on their face. Yeah. You're in there for an hour with people who are you know, pretty you know, sharks. And so it's hard to, you know, not lose control of that conversation over the course of an hour. Uh -huh. And the moment you do, <laughs> that's when the that's when the producers of the show say, that's the part we want. We want that, oh, that, that, oh, that staring into the... Oh, right, because they want the, the drama. Right, well, yeah, I mean, you know, nobody wants to watch a TV show like Shark Tank to watch uh -huh. everybody, you know, skate in there and get a deal and leave. It's, it's fun to watch... The good and the bad and the ugly, right. all the parts of it. You know, it's exciting, you know? It is. Now, were you nervous? We actually have a lot of people in the chat, so I am looking down, not because of that. But uh, we do have Fantasy Stats Guru. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Moobs McGee and Tina. Tina is back from vacation. Oh, hey, Tina. <laughs> she so is, glad you're back. Tina is in Slovakia. And do you know it's early, early in the morning in Slovakia right now? I believe that. And, of course, Fantasy Stats Guru, Guru is our uh, invisible. He's our he's our virtual co-host. So, Perfect. And we have Judy. Uh, uh, yes, no Zoe, no Chris either tonight, Judy. They are just not around. You're just stuck with Constance and <laughs> belt guy. But of course, this is a great opportunity for you to ask someone who's been there, Nate, who is in the studio with us. And of course, I am wearing my mission belt, by the way. Well, that's all. Well, you look fabulous. Thank you. Looks good on you. Um, and you're an interesting story to me because Mission Belt wasn't your first uh, time at the rodeo. You've been like a serial salesman and entrepreneur. Yeah, so most people don't realize, but when you go from, you know, a lot of times people go from like a normal job, like a J-O-B. Yeah. The, there's five tiers of income earning. Oh, Did God, you know I love that? this. No, this okay. is why you're here. Okay, I've been meeting you for five, five okay. hours. The very, the, very first, <laughs> the very first one is the hourly wage. Yeah. My first job was that, you know, and you go out. And I, I did, I did, 
I did uh, farm chores for an, all, an old farmer named Arvin Anderson, this old, old leathery guy, didn't talk a lot. Back and, in Utah? Yeah. Okay. And so he hired me, whatever, and I did these jobs for him for, you know, three seventy five an hour or whatever, you know, and it's just crappy jobs. So you, so you do the hourly. Then you go from hourly to a salary job. Okay. A salary job offers a little bit more security. You're not battling for hours with anybody. Yeah. You can basically count on a, on a steady schedule coming right. in, so on and so forth. It's a better it's upgrade. Sometimes this involves uh, you know, things like benefits and stuff. And a lot of people stop right there. That's kind of where they end up. Right. And they look for right. how to improve that job. Right. People who want to get to the next level will go from there. They'll go to sales and consulting, which is the third tier. Yes. Sales and consulting is still employment, but it gives you, it's kind of a hybrid. Because ultimately, as hard as you work... That's how your income's gonna flux, right? So I got into sales in that just at a very young age okay. because I realized I wanted to get out of that. So it was a perfect, you know, a perfect breeding ground for that entrepreneur uh, in me to actually break out because you learn to manage your time. See, when you're we're an hourly or or, or, or you're a or you're a, uh, a salary employee, right. you have someone telling you when you can go to the bathroom, when you can go out <laughs> and have a cigarette or whatever, right? And then you get into that sales consulting mode, and suddenly you're in a little bit more control and, and you're really allowing yourself to make it. You know, I, I lived 100% commission uh, jobs for probably probably 10 years. Really? Yeah, I mean, no, no, no base, no nothing. And so it's like you go out and you eat what you kill. Right? Were there vacillations during that time in your income that made you nervous ever? No, or no? No, because I just, uh, I just, I get in the zone. So I, I'm extreme, like ADD, all kinds of crazy. In fact, when I aired on Shark Tank, the National Council for ADDHD called me and said, "Hey, we'd like to consider you to be, you know, a spokesperson for us and everything." Uh -huh. And they went through my whole story. They're like, "This is fascinating. You're high functioning. This is incredible. Uh, what kind of medications have you used?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm unmedicated." And they're like, "Oh, we can't sell that because that whole organization exists just to push drugs." Right. And if there's no drugs to sell, if I'm not using any drugs to manage this, then how can I be a spokesperson? person for you can't yeah because nobody wants to hear that you went in there and you just figured out you know I had nice supportive teachers and parents who <laughs> helped me do stuff and I figured out how to get focused but the thing about it is is ADD people if you can find that focus and really dial in you can make it happen and so when I started selling anything I would just become that guy really and I always treated every sales job I ever had like it was the last job in the world I said, okay, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to start selling insurance. Okay, my goal is I'm going to do this, and I'm going to own an insurance agency, and I'm going to do this. And I'd follow the path until I realized, oh, you know what? This is a dead end or not. Right. Or I got into selling automobiles, sold Toyotas. I'm like, okay, I'm going to own a dealership, and I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then I realized, you know what? This is not something I really want to do. So I treated every job like this is the focus. Most people fail in life okay. because they get to that spot. And they're like, well, this is just a, this is just a stone until I get to my next spot. Right. And they treat everything like a temporary place. Okay. And so they never ever get to the good part of themselves. They never get 100% invested in their, in, their, in, in their interest, in their business, or whatever it might be. So they never get to that next level. So they never really own the role. Is they that never what you're own, saying? No, they never own the role. The whole time they're trying to be somebody else. They're, they're thinking about something else. They're sitting down, they're eating a steak dinner, but they're worried about you know, how they're gonna, how they're gonna, what they're going to have you know, you know, for breakfast tomorrow. It's like, no, enjoy the moment. You're never going to enjoy the dinner. And guess what? If you're not enjoying it, you won't do well. That's it, period. If it feels like a good job, it is. And so most of my jobs never felt like jobs because I treat them like a game. You ever see that? Uh, you see Mary Poppins? Yeah. Snap, the job's a game. With every job there is to be done, there's an element of fun. You find the fun, snap, the job's a game. So you got you got to do that. you got to make it fun. Right. You know, don't do anything you don't think is fun. And uh, selling even the most mundane products can be fun. Uh -huh. So you have to enjoy the people you work with and laugh <laughs> and have a good time. And sometimes the only person laughing is you, but that's okay. you got to do that. So that's your third tier. Fourth tier is entrepreneurship. Now, most people think that that's like the end-all, be-all. That's like the fifth tier. That's where you're right. at. Most entrepreneurs, they're struggling. And, um, you know, in the sense that if they don't show up to their business, their business suffers. Right. If they don't come to work for four weeks, everything collapses. Right? It's, it's, it's not... It's not it's not tenable. So you're working. You, you have, I mean, you have your own business. You're the boss. But if you don't show up to work, you're, you're in trouble. So it's, it's a job that you've that you basically you, you paid for, and that's cool. But the fifth tier is the most awesome, and that's passive income. It means you get to a spot where the business is running. Whether you die, take a vacation, you know, become incapacitated, your business still rolls and still makes cash. You know, I heard you speak once and you said something to the effect of, oh, I don't like weekends because people are not putting belts into boxes yeah, and shipping Yeah, the money them. machine goes off. I, I, you know, everybody, that's, that's a mindset change. Everybody, you know, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Friday at 5, I can't wait to that. For me, it's like, 
then will also people be back to pack up the belts. You know, I mean, it's like we must have uh, the, you know the results, and um, and so it, it turns your money machine off. Even though online sales stuff come in, whatever things are getting bottled up, and then Monday morning at, at nine a.m. Yeah. breaks free, and then you're kind of get caught up around Tuesday ish. Well, since Thursday. we're all aspiring to something of that. Um, uh, of that level. Um, we do have a question for you, of course, Fantasy Stats Guru. Um, this is a question. Were there any uh, sharks that acted like they didn't want to be there? Interesting. Yeah. No, all the sharks, they love their show. They love what they're doing. Of course, you have to realize that these guys are filming these shows in two-week bunches. So that's not all filmed out every week. Oh. They'll film out a batch two weeks. They do about two in the summer, two two-week ba- uh, two. Two two week oh. batches, so the two weeks in a row, right. then a break, and then two weeks, and then sometimes they'll do like a little cleanup session for another week. But okay. So, so what's happening is, is entrepreneurs are coming. These these sharks are, they're on camera at like six a.m. They're getting prepped and makeup at five. I mean, so you get in there at five o'clock to pitch them. Yeah. They're at the end of a long day, so sure, I'm sure there's some moments where they're just and depending on who was on before, not everybody who goes on Shark Tank, is awesome. There's lots of whiny, crazy people who apply for this show. Right. And nobody, and <laughs> people can't wait to get them off stage fast enough. You know what I mean? Right, right, There's right. some very entitled people who think that, I mean, it takes a crazy person to run for office or to try to be on a right. television show like that, right? Uh-huh. You have to think you're going to be pretty lucky or, or good or whatever it is. So, it, yeah. so there's some ego involved for sure by just applying for a show like that. You believe in some crazy math because 50,000 people a year apply for that show. And to think that you're going to be one of 70 or 80 people who's going to get on, and then you're going to be one of 30 or 40 or 50 people who get a deal, that's crazy. Do you right? believe in luck? Oh, yeah. You do? Yeah. Okay. I mean, to a degree, right? Because anybody who anybody who doesn't tip their hat to luck and has a little success, uh, they're crazy. Larry King has that in his gym at his house. He's got this, this like, you know, 10 sayings from Larry. And number seven is, you know, anybody who's been, you know, relatively successful doesn't tip their hat to luck is kidding themselves and I've always liked that good because there is some math to that I mean the reality of it is is that I went on Shark Tank I hustled I've done my part right, for sure right. but you know what uh, I'm also uh, you know I also speak English mm-hmm. you know and um, uh, you know, I've got two functioning hands I mean, just, <laughs> I've, I've got things that, I've got things that make it right you know what made, made it easier you don't get on a Shark Tank because you have a good idea right you're on a Shark Tank because you're weird it's about engaging television. Okay. Right? You ever seen any reality television show, whether it's The Bachelor or whatever, they don't put the most normal people on there. They put people who are going to give you some story. Now, speaking of, we do have a little clip that's just a little snippet. I know you were, of course, on Shark Tank for a long time. You know, you were filming for quite a bit. So this is just a little snippet that we wanted to play from back in the day. Yourself, or do you? Uh, no, actually, uh, I'm If you could just start it at the beginning and then go to about one I minute make in. It, still make it a comfortable price. Thank you. Hi, Sharks. I'm Nate Holtzaffel, and I'm founder of the Mission Belt Company, and we're seeking $50,000 in exchange for 20% equity in our company. Everyone owns a belt. Most people own a few. And in a 1,000 years, this everyday accessory has hardly ever changed. And some people might ask, why reinvent the wheel? At the Mission Belt Company, we've asked, why not? So we set on a mission to improve this everyday accessory. For starters, careful. We removed all the holes. We've also employed our unique ratchet system to allow it to go together. You can hear the clicks as it goes together, feeds, slowly, and use a release lever on the bottom to take it apart. It's like a giant zip tie for your pants. Now, sharks, I'm a big husky guy. And keeping my pants on is a full-time job, okay? (laughs) I wear out so many belts. (laughs) I wear all kinds of belts. It is for Kevin also. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Larry, we got got something in common, that's good. <laughs> Keeping up my pants is a full-time job because I, I wear them out so quick and the holes are what cause the problem, okay? Regardless of my caloric intake, the mission belt's gonna give me the perfect fit every time and it's gonna last a long time, okay? Sharks, with your help, I believe I can put one of these belts around the waist of everyone in America. Perfect. Let's make a deal. I, I haven't seen that in a long, long, long time. And of long, course you did time. get a deal, David, and I love your belt, by the way. Um, I'm wearing a, uh, a mission belt, and I did have to figure out how to make it work because it has no um, holes in it. That's right. Did you see when I handled it on there, and you could actually hear it click and do all yeah. that? Yeah. So that's actually so an important part of selling something, whether it's to a customer, right. whether you're selling a Toyota, you're selling an aluminum siding, or you're selling a mission belt. I can't tell you how important it is to have 
played physically with the product you're selling so many times that it makes it seem yeah, easy. Yeah, I love that click, and so, actually. And, so, and just getting it to go just like that, whatever, uh -huh. it takes a little bit of time. But whatever product you're selling, handle it, fondle it, get familiar with it so you're just able to just use it. And that's, it, it, you, it makes it makes a product look so easy. It's all about the hands. Hands are very important. For any salesperson, not just from on TV, uh -huh. hands are dramatically important. And almost nobody understands how big of a deal that is. Okay, that's good to know. And yeah. you did have another question. Um, uh, Judy is, wants to know: Does everyone who gets in this tank get shown on TV? Do you no, know? I'm not sure if you no. okay. So it's it, it, it's uh, actually I, I wrote an ebook. You can get it from my website. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, I, NateState.com has it. it's free. Okay. And it's called uh, Seven Steps to Shark Tank, I think. Mm -hmm. And what it is, it goes through the seven tiers from where you apply. But even if you go down, mm -hmm. okay, you go down to, to 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 film, they bring you all in to a to a. a Big production studio, but it's like empty. It's like, I think it's next door to where they filmed Wizard of Oz. It's huge. And it's empty. And there's a bunch of tables and stuff in there. And they say, okay, give us a dry pitch. So you dry pitch. Oh, okay. Stand there just in front of everybody. You dry pitch. And there's all kinds of, I mean, there's, there's, there's like a hundred people in this room. There's two lawyers, three lawyers. There's legal people all over the place. Mm -hmm. There's people from Sony. There's people from Finimax, which is the LLC, which owns that. There's people from um, uh, ABC. They're just people everywhere, right? Right. Okay, they're all over the place. And so ultimately, you know, you're, you're kind of put on the spot. And they say, okay, great, we'll let you know. And then they call you at your hotel room later that night. Oh. So the whole day, you're just like, ah. Because you go down there at like <laughs> 6 a.m. What do we do? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, what, what do we do? And so you get down there, and they call you and say, hey, you're in, you're out. And even if you go and they say you're in, just because you film doesn't even mean it'll make it to the cutting room floor. Even if you make a deal, right. there are people who have made deals online, on TV, and have not aired. That's really fascinating. You it's don't know until you see your little ugly little face there on TV, like appearing. Like it just, and they overstate uh -huh. that. They're like, they're like, they're like, don't count anything, don't count yeah, anything, don't, don't, count don't spend anything. any money, don't count anything, just do wow. whatever you want. And yeah. Well, there were some people that did make deals on the most recent episode, of course, which was, yeah. uh, as we say, it's a funny coincidence because it's season eight. It's so many seasons later, episode Oh my 23. gosh, season eight. <laughs> like the Rocky, you know, movies just keep going and going. Yeah, oh my God, it's such a successful going. show. It is. Yes. Um, and uh, one of the things, uh, of course, we had Billy and Randy in the tank. Uh, they were asking $700,000 for 7%, <laughs> which, of course, all the sharks scoffed at. Um, but they had yeah. a really great idea, Thompson T, and it's for men, but I want this damn thing because I have what 35% of people have which is situational heavy sweating <laughs> situational so, heavy sweating and you probably see people wearing beautiful ensembles and you're always dressed really well you probably don't have this problem but when you have like sweating and your arm goes up and there's a big circle of darkness in your underarm yes, area I, I don't sweat I'm not I'm, <laughs> I'm above that I am a cyborg I do not sweat <laughs> and of course um uh, there was a couple of, oh, someone, uh, fantasy stats guru said, yeah, the stats behind the probability is cr crazy. Congratulations on beating the odds and may the odds be ever in your favor. So um, awesome. people were really, uh, congratulations. But anyway, about this, the basically the idea was that there was some fabric panels and there is a compound polymer in one of these kind of fabric shields under the arm. So it basically stops the sweat from actually being visible. And it was a really neat idea. And I was actually surprised that more people weren't jumping on this. Again, uh -huh. they're asking 700,000 for 7%. I know that that's kind of ridiculous, but Robert yeah, did offer 25%. And then of course, Kevin did one of his loan deals where he said, I'll give you the money. I want 7%, but it's a loan and 18% interest, which everyone laughed at. And uh, so Robert got the deal for, he gave them 700. It's cheap. For, for the money. It's cheap. You figure out what a product costs. It's like a mission belt costs $6 to make. Yeah. We sell them for $35 or $40. It's like 600% markup. There's some pretty excellent math when you actually boil down what it costs to make a product. What it makes 18% is reasonable. Most entrepreneurs will tell you their two best friends who help them start their business, uh -huh. Visa and MasterCard. Really? Oh, yeah. And so 18% loan, I mean, people might laugh at that, whatever, but I don't think that's insane at all. It's insane for like a car loan if you have good credit, right. but not for an unsecured debt. I mean, that's pretty reasonable. So you think giving, t if you were offered 25% versus 7%, uh, but then you have an 18% loan. See, I would, I would actually want the partner, so I would just do whatever, get the partner, because I realize the relationship is more valuable. Yeah. Originally, you know the deal I wanted to do on Shark Tank? What? I actually wanted to uh, sell 20% of the business for a dollar. But the but but the production wouldn't let me do it last minute, and so I came up with fifty thousand dollars like thirty seconds before I went on air. 
<laughs> you know, that's really funny because I noticed you asked for 50000 Yeah, I didn't even want that. I wanted a dollar. Yeah. But like the very last minute, they're like, that's not enough. Uh, that won't be engaging enough. Got to make it exciting. I'm like, oh, okay. That would have been pretty so exciting. So I just walked out there and was like, yo, how about $50,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Let's do it. And just that, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I, wanted the, I wanted the partner. What people don't realize is that hey, some of the work at Chancellor were really like, you know, imagine if you were on a basketball team and, you know, Michael Jordan wanted to be on your team. Would you make it easy for him to get on your team or would you make it hard? Right, very easy. But almost every entrepreneur goes out and they want all this oh, money. See, the problem gosh. is they try, to, they try to hit a home run with the shark or the investor. Don't hit a home run with them. Partner up with them, make a deal that's easy and good, and then go out and hit a home run on all your customers. That's the way you do it. And when you have the right team, the right mindset, you know, all these sharks, they invest in you. What they're investing in? They're investing in people. The ideas suck. I mean, belts are stupid. I didn't even invent the type of belt that I sell, <laughs> right? I made it cooler, made it sexier, branded the heck out of yeah. it. These types of belts have been around for 40 years. But we did it better. They have? Yeah. I thought it was your total invention. No, I'm not an inventor. I'm okay. a salesman. And they cut out so much of that on... On, on the actual show, the reality uh -huh. is that I didn't invent this product. I branded a product. Damon didn't invent T-shirts. Chevy didn't invent cars. Oakley didn't invent sunglasses. Nike didn't invent shoes. You know, I mean, it, it, it doesn't. Inventions are not what sells. What sells is a well-branded, well-marketed product, and that's what we did. I took a product that nobody was paying attention to, and I said, oh, "Okay, yeah. I'm gonna get everybody to pay attention to this thing," and uh, we did it in a bigger, better way than anybody's ever done before. Now, you, did you start um, marketing your product to men, and then you went into ladies? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, it, it's, a, it's a product, it's kind of like Wayfarers. Yeah. You know, it's geared towards men, but women sure wear them and love them. Right. I actually you know? really like it, because yeah, no, I don't like holes on a belt. No, it's a, it's it's a cleaner it, look. Honestly, it's an incredible product. Yeah. You know, and uh, I just knew that, it, see, here's the thing that's so funny is, it's not even really about the way the belt works. It's about having a company that makes belts, that specializes in it. Everybody else did it as an afterthought. Right. But I, I knew Oakley had come out and done sunglasses. I knew Nike had done shoes. Skull Candy had done headphones. Yeah. Stance had done socks. So why wouldn't you do belts? And if I hadn't done it, somebody else would have. What that? That's true. Yeah, how about that? Well, I want to hear what you think about the belt buckle, guys, because of course Trevor and Justin came in from Northern California, and they were called Wallet Buckle, and they were asking for 500000 for 10%, which of course the guys laughed a little. Interesting concept. If you saw their belt buckles that, of course, you can hold up to five uh, credit cards in, and they're really snazzy. They're very decorative buckles, so it's not something like you would wear yeah, with yeah, your, your suit. <laughs> Zippy belts. <laughs> it's zany belt day. Now, most of their sales come from things like going to stagecoach and going to like mostly country kind of live events and that's where they're making yeah, a lot some of money real big you know i grew up in the country they got real big hubcap size exactly exactly and the thing is is their sales were so um were pretty impressive to me they were making really pretty good money they're uh selling for about 40 to 90 dollars and their cost is about uh, uh seven bucks for some of them the cost is very that's low so, so you think the cost is low? Yeah, it's low. Yeah, I think so too. The first year they were made two hundred and fifty. Second year five hundred thousand. They were on uh, deck mm -hmm. this year to make about eight hundred thousand. I was surprised that um, you know people weren't just coming out at them and wanting it. And I, Damon yeah, did talk but, you about know, you. revenue and profits are yeah. Well, you know, uh, the thing is, you know, revenue is one thing, but there's there's all kinds of businesses that don't make any money. Like Amazon. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah. They don't really make any money. I mean, they do bazillions of dollars in right. revenue, but they're they're spending. I mean, they spend a lot of money to generate a lot of money, and there are businesses like that. So I mean, we might get the whole scoop on that. So it may have come out that you know we've done a bazillion dollars in business, but we also spent two bazillion dollars to get here, and that happens. So you know, every little bit of business is, is is different for sure. But you know, give me a business that does ten million sales a year and makes two and a half million bucks. I'd rather have that than one that does a hundred million and makes you know a million bucks. It's all about the you know the net profit. That's what it's, and then then the ease. I mean, if you've got, I mean, you gotta realize that you know if you have a business that makes ten million dollars a year, mm -hmm. you can bet your butt you got two or three million dollars in cash tied up doing that. Interesting. So your money's got to return. I mean, like I got real estate it pays me twelve and thirteen percent a year just renting buildings and apartments to people, right? So, okay, that's what I can get conservatively. I don't have to worry about anything. If there's no <laughs> risk. So, okay, well where where are we at? If I'm gonna have three million dollars tied up. You know, 13%. Well, I'm, I'm going to need double that in order to make it even interesting. <laughs> so you have to know what your cost, your opportunity costs are. And so so maybe, maybe it turns out that maybe, I don't know. I don't, we don't know the whole conversation. Right, right, So much right. comes out, but it might be that, 
you have a ton of revenue, but they don't. And when the sharks don't come out with obvious things, it's always one of two things. One, they don't like the business model, or two, they don't like the person. Why do they get so upset when the valuation hot was high? Because on this, the valuation was $5 million, and they were, like, really annoyed at that. what you're saying is, is you're... you're, you're what you're doing is it's disrespectful. Ah, okay. It's doing, personal, dis- isn't it? It's, it's, anyone says it's just business, not personal. Screw that. Business is very personal to me. Yeah. Very, 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 very personal. Uh-huh. It's very personal. It's how I feed my family. It's how I go out and do things. Interesting. It's, it's, it's how I make my stake in life. It's business the culmination is, of your life. Totally in a personal. Sense. Anybody says it's not. Yeah. Uh, you know, screw you. You don't know what the heck you're talking about. It's totally personal. Business is like the personal thing. Now check us out. The thing about it is, is that you know there are there are all kinds of opportunities to piss off a shark, and the first thing you can do is ask for way too much money from them. What you're saying is, I don't value you, even though you're Michael Jordan. I want wow. you to pay me a million bucks or five hundred grand to be on my team. Oh, and by the way, I'm not gonna give you half the team. I'm only gonna give you five percent of the team. Okay, so that's. Can you imagine how insane that would be? But people don't see yeah. it in that light. It's like, look, no, make it easy. Hey, you know, all you guys, all the sharks are better at business than I am, and I would have taken any one of them as a partner. I wanted Damon John, I wrote his name down on a cue card, placed it in my pocket, I went out and I landed that dude. But I'll tell you what, I would have taken any single one of them. I love them all. They're all fabulous people. I don't know Barbara all that well. Right. Lori and I, we get along pretty good. She's a nice lady. She's a funny lady. She's nice. Uh, I, I, Kevin. Kevin comes and buys belts from us. He came to our belt warehouse without even being on TV. He came out just to check it out. He buys them all the time. Uh, just you know, People on that show are so nice. Uh, Cuban's so nice. Are they? Yeah, Hatcherback. I, I see him. I've seen him a couple of times. He and I buy clothes from the same store, and he's just a great guy who's just really, really nice. And these people are nice, but you have to get past that spot, and you got to, you got to bring it down a little bit. Your ego check a little bit, and just say, hey, look, what can I do to get you to be a partner? Heck, I'll pay you. Because here's the thing: is once you're partners with a guy like that, and what? Right, exactly. Uh, I, I, I find myself saying that a lot. And, of course, you did answer uh, Tina's question about how Mr. Wonderful was. And, of course, Fantasy Stats guru Ben, thank you for joining mm. us. He was mentioning that marketing, like you said, is huge, and that's hard for him to say as an engineer. So. Yeah. Well, that's all it really is. I, I'm being really honest with you. Right? We're like, like, really, marketing is like the thing. Perfect example. So we do licensed products. You license products. We, we, yeah, we, Mission we, belt yeah, does. we got to deal with the okay. NBA. we got to deal with all kinds of different you know, organizations that license a deal. Go into a store sometime, see a hoodie, okay? Whatever hoodie, a champion hoodie, doesn't matter what. Right. And it'll be $30. You slap an LA Lakers logo on it, it's suddenly $60. It's not a $30 process it undergoes to get that logo put on there. People perceive value in the branding and the marketing. Now, do that you do that is. as well? Because sure, this is yeah. interesting. I noticed you always dress very well. Are you someone who can do garment analysis? Can you go find a designer who's not like Tom Ford or something and look and see that it's a great product and you'll go for it? Oh, yeah, sure. I have things in my closet that are not. I buy a lot of clothes from Tom Ford. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, this jacket, this shirt. Oh, I'm is a, it? Okay. I love Tom Ford. Tom Ford's awesome. Tom Ford's a designer that makes clothes that fit man-sized men. Manly men. Manly men. I got okay. big shoulders, big hips. You know, I weigh 240 pounds. I'm 6'2". Do you? And, yeah. And so find something, you know, Tom Ford is a proportionate man. So find somebody who's like that. Most designers mm-hmm. are a little more feminine, frankly. And right. so a lot of the, you know, a lot of the other, you know, the stuff that it's made for slim cut, very slim, slim yeah. dudes. I mean, pants that laugh at me halfway <laughs> up my leg, right? And Tom Ford was the first designer who made, a, who made a jacket with lapels big enough to make my body look right. Some of them are so skinny. You just, you look ridiculous, but even these right. lapels are huge, but on me, they look quite normal, don't they? They look great. You'd yeah. be dying in Spain, by the way, because I went and I, I was trying to find, they men are very slender and very, in Spain. Yeah, it's, it's a so slim you'd thing be it, like, be a triple extra. Yeah, my family, you know, I was born to work on a farm. My great-grandfather and all, I mean, they were carpenters and farmers, right? Right. And I was supposed to go out in the field and work from morning to night, you know, eat six, 7,000 calories and, you know die under an apple tree on my 50th birthday, you know, having a heart attack. I mean, like, that's, well, that's, I'm genetically, I'm I'm genetically created to do physical manual labor. How do you feel being maybe one of the first people in your line to not do physical labor? Well, my father's a teacher, my dad's a professor, so dad, you know, dad didn't do that, but, you know, um, you know, for, for me, for sure, uh, my grandfather was a, was a great, uh, my great grandfather was a good salesman. I mean, you know, my one grandfather, my mother's uh, uh, grandfather, he was a he was a salesman at Forest Lawn, sold burial plots. That's what he did. So in I'm, LA. I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm related okay. to a variety of, of salespeople and stuff over the years. But but I, for the most part, farmers and carpenters. And so um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a weird thing. My dad's my dad's really smart. My dad has a PhD in first century Roman history. 
Dad's a really smart, smart guy. I love Roman yeah. antiquities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so do I. Uh, my brother and I, though, uh, we started this business together. You know, neither of us really finished college or anything like that. My brother admittedly finished a lot more than I did. I did like four classes. He went for several years. But, you know, much to my father's chagrin, we never turned out to be amazing students. But, but to answer your question, I see something that's quality and beautiful. I'll buy it without, I don't need to have a designer label on it to right. buy it. Not, um, yeah. So you, are you, you are then immune from the marketing spell? Uh, no, not, no, I'm not immune to the marketing spell. I mean, there's certain things, whatever, like I, I you know, I, I like stuff. Like I'll see something, yeah. whatever, and I'll, I'll, I'll be more interested in whatever. Half the time it's because I know the reputation. So like I know if I go into mm. Tom Ford, I know that I pick up these shirts, I know that they're going to fit me. The slim fit shirt that they have fits me there. That's awesome. Yeah, it's because it's made for somebody with, you know, big shoulders and a big chest. Like I know, so like there's a, there's a confidence in knowing that. And I also know that the product should be really well made. They're always going to look right. cool. Like I, I, I trust it, right? Uh -huh. but, but sometimes, you know, you'll find good products that are out there. I got a jacket in my closet. It's like no name company you never heard of. It wasn't a lot of money. It looks great. I get as many comments on that as I do anything else. That's awesome. So Fantasy Stats Guru says he can't wear designer pants because of his thighs are too muscular. Tom Ford. Buddy. Okay. Go we'll Tom Ford. Go talk to Jason uh, at the Beverly Hills location and he will set you up. Um, yeah, it is weird. Uh, Fantasy Stats Guru, they were talking about how when the presenters don't own much of the company, that yeah. becomes another issue too. Uh -huh. Well, then they do ask for some numbers and they find out that you've given away that most of your company you don't own anymore. You know, I don't know if you've yeah. heard that happens in yeah, the Shark yeah, yeah, Tank yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, you dilute, you dilute, right, you dilute. Right, so you it's dilute. diluted. You know, I mean, Bill Gates, I, I don't remember what the exact numbers were, but he owns a very tiny part of his really? business. Yeah, you'd think he'd be like the majority shareholder. He's not. He is, uh, he's, a minor, he's a minority shareholder. But, yeah. But he's the man with the plan, so everybody follows him. Yeah. Well, I'm interested to see what you think of Rumi Spice. They were on tonight. So it's Kim, Emily, and Keith. They are from Chicago. They're all U.S. Army veterans. And when Keith was in Afghanistan, they were all deployed to Afghanistan. And um, Keith came across uh, farmers. He met farmers. He found that there was amazing spice in Afghanistan. And saffron, which kind of like raised my saffron consciousness. I make paella. I love Spanish food. Yeah, it's awesome. So I use a lot of saffron. Did you know there's amazing high-grade premium um, saffron in Afghanistan? I did not know that. Yes, what a truly listen, amazing fact. Do you buy saffron ever? Uh, it's expensive, right? It, they keep it in the safe. What do you mean they keep it? If you safe? go to like a supermarket, a lot of times it's kept in the safe. Like the raw stuff is kept in the safe, isn't it? That would make sense because after it's what expensive. I learned, yes, yeah. But, but yeah. Vanilla is expensive. Like there's, there's certain things that are surprisingly expensive and saffron's expensive for sure. My mom used to make it and as a kid. My brother makes oh, an amazing did? paella. Okay. Uh, well, dude, you got to tell him this because I blew my mind tonight that according to Keith, because these, you know, this trio, Rumi Spice, that's the name of their company. And of course they were seeking, um, what were they seeking? They were seeking $250,000, of course, for 5% of the company, all these people, with all these big dreams, but they- Let's hit a home run right now. <laughs> I want $5 million. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Screw all you sharks, man. And of course they are doing something. They really want to make money, but they did talk about they want to support the farmers back in Afghanistan and they yeah, want people cool. to do well it was really really great and of course that's in vogue the whole social entrepreneurship I mean every time we sell a belt we give a dollar to yeah, help hungry families feed themselves you do that I like I mean, that that's a cool thing everybody you know I mean that's that's a cool trending thing and if you can figure out a way to do that that's awesome yeah it works very well and uh but but the, your product has to stand good on its own you can't use that as a crutch I know so when people, people are like really well you should buy this there. even though it's crap because like what you don't care about like dogs with cancer it's yeah. like no actually I mean I do but not enough to give you thirty five dollars. Exactly, that thing, you know, it's like so. a turn. It's a turn off right. as well. Right, certainly can be. Yeah, well, this saffron is for two grams. It's thirty five dollars, and their cost is about eight dollars. Which was the problem is they're not making a lot of money, and they were asked. Um, That's the problem with ninety percent of all businesses. Yeah, they and don't make a lot of money. Exactly, keeping them in position four, that tier of right. income making their entire lives. Okay, and not passive income. I yeah. now have to work on this. Yeah. Um, they were offered a deal from Mark two hundred fifty thousand dollars. He was going to give. Uh, he wanted fifteen yeah. percent of the company, and of course, Robert did the same thing. I'll give you two hundred thousand for twenty-five percent of the company. And of Cuban's, course, Cuban's awesome. They leapt on that. They should have leapt on that like the minute it came oh, out of his yeah, mouth. Yeah, Whatever yeah, he yeah. was going to offer him, yes. Never second guess a deal from a shark. Because they get pissed off. Because they get tired. That I have literally had so many people over the years pitch me businesses. Oh. There's three companies that I've made offers on to help out with. Yeah. And they're totally stoked. And then like two days goes by. Well, I've been talking to my wife. Oh no! And and, and what happens is because I'm interested now. Right. Now they think that I, I'm you know I, that that they were too dumb and not asking enough. Oh. Like they psych themselves out. Right. And so I've never invested in another business because 
every time the entrepreneur gets like these big greedy eyes. Well, if Nate wants it and he's okay with that deal, then it must be too good. Well, no, actually, I just and so they'll psych themselves out. So the same thing happens on Shark Tank. They go on there and they'll get these. They'll they'll ask. Have you ever seen a show where they ask for something mm-hmm. and they get offered exactly what they want and they're like. Well, I gotta, I gotta think oh, about and it. they counter. I gotta think about for it here for a second. Hold on a second here. I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, it is. He's weird. like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> of course, fantasy stats guru and Tina are mentioning about saffron that they haven't had it. They're not sure what it is. It sounds familiar. It's it's very interesting, and it's usually a lot of the saffron that you find in grocery stores is it does come from Spain. But of course, Keith, uh, these roomy spice people, they're such experts. They kind of enlightened me that when you are buying saffron from Spain, a lot of times it's not from Spain. It's actually from Iran, then Spain. That makes sense. Yeah, they were saying that actually the quality has usually been handled by many, many people. So they said their uh, saffron is super pure and straight from Afghanistan. Mm. So something to look out for, um, Afghanistan mm-hmm. saffron. Watch out. Yes. Now, it's funny Next time I'm there, I'll have to pick up some. Yes, or if you see some roomy spice. because uh, Right. Yeah. And Kim and Emily were really interesting because, of course, they were West Point grads. They were Harvard Business yeah, School grads. That's a big grads. deal. They you were know, like smart total people. studs. I had breakfast with General Wesley Clark the other day, or another West Point man, I believe. Interesting. Smart, smart people come out of that school. And you know, one of the things that some yeah. people don't realize is that sometimes being so smart, you can kind of psych yourself out. People have asked me if I was nervous on Shark Tank. I'm too dumb to be nervous. You didn't seem nervous. You no, seemed not. very relaxed. Yeah, just, just, nor- I'm just like, I'm too stupid to even know that I should be nervous. It's like, oh, okay. And so sometimes really, really smart, well-educated mm-hmm. people, they psych themselves out of progress all the time. The yeah. thing that gets in the way of almost every human being's success, it's not some peripheral thing. It's not the city they're born in, the color of their skin, whether they like boys or girls. It's not that crap. What it is is them not getting out of their own way. Is it pride then? No, it's a mix of things sometimes, but most of the time it's just people trying to outsmart themselves. Analysis paralysis. What that means is that you end up in a situation where you're, 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 you're presented options and you just don't know what to do. And there's so much data coming in. And you're so used to crunching numbers and creating homework for teachers. Yeah. It's a job. Teacher says do a task. Your job is to fill the task and do it. And so it boils into business. Let me tell you make money. You buy something for a dollar and you sell it for four. People say you sell it for two. That You won't make enough money if you sell it for two. You buy something for a dollar and you sell it for four. That's ideal, right? Right. And so... You know, you're just buying something for a certain price and selling for more money consistently. Lots. Now, Frequency. Do you make decisions by instinct then? Or how much do you have to go through a lot of analysis? I don't think that too much. I think analysis is troublesome because I think most times people spend so much time trying to figure out the right thing to do that indecision is a decision within itself. Yeah. And my gut instincts are probably right 95% of the time. So, 95, good. Yeah. So if they're, let's just, but let's just say they're even 75 that means that more often than not, I'm going to be right. The other times that I'm wrong, guess what? If you make decisions quickly, you find out you're wrong quickly, too. And you oh, can move on awesome. to the right thing. And most people, they sit there, and mm. they're paralyzed. And they're like, well, we don't want to do the wrong thing. We don't want to offend anybody, so let's not do anything. Yeah, Roger, let's not offend anybody. Let's not piss anybody off. You know what? Piss people off. Make a difference. Otherwise, you're going to be in vanilla land your whole life, and nobody buys vanilla. It's it, well, People want rocky freaking road. So give it to them. They want Chunky Monkey. Yeah, you're interesting. Can I tell them about the McDonald's story and then I have to do the... Uh, okay, oh, gosh, I wish you were here longer. Um, but, okay, I, I have to just get through these Colorado Springs... Uh, okay. So I like okay. people because then I'll like, you know, I'll like have not done my job. Yeah, you gotta um, do your job. Yeah, I gotta do my job. But because uh, we're almost done, we only have a few minutes le- left. But of course, we had Tyler Peoples, who was with People's Design, Colorado Springs. Interesting it's a cool story. Last name. It was, and he did a great job with the presentation. It, it maybe comes down to what you were just talking about. He had a certain ease about him. He talked about he was somebody um, who wasn't supposed to live beyond his two weeks when he was a baby. Mm-hmm. He did not see until he was three, and he was mm-hmm. told he would never talk. He went all of that. He saw he wasn't blind for the rest of his life. He got to see at three. He speaks beautifully. He is also somebody who started as a line cook as a teenager. He worked his way up to become an executive chef. He quit that, and of course, he was cooking for many people, serving about 150,000 uh, meals at a homeless shelter in Colorado wow. Springs. And then he came up with this, you know, better mouse trap. It was this idea of having instead of many bowls, um, you have one bowl, and inside it is a little device that allows you to drain, to strain. 
brain and kind of chop things up within like a bowl. So Instant QVC product. Exactly. It's, Get out there and sell exactly. it. Exactly. Lori, Lori almost didn't even let him finish because she offered, um, he was looking for something very reasonable, $75,000 for 25%. See, that, that's a reasonable deal. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like 75 grand. Like a lot of people, you know, in my position or their position, they got 75 grand. It's not a problem taking a risk on somebody. And you look at the person. And the main thing is when you're looking at a person to make a deal, you want to make sure you're not making a deal with somebody who's going to give you a lot of brain damage. The one thing. Right. That most people think that. A pita. Most people think, in the ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Most people think that the one thing that you know uh, that I would value or the sharks value is money. It's not. It's time. The money I used to have better time. I, I, I want to get a nicer car so I can get there and have a better time getting there. I can't get there any faster. There's speed limits, but I want to get there better. You buy a cell phone to save time. There's not a dead billionaire in the ground who wouldn't give you half his money to be alive for another ten years. Oh, I know. We right. Can't so buy it's time. it's about the time. So when uh, when, uh, when when the sharks look at a the guy, they want to see if they're going to get their time or if they're going to be they're going to be robbed from. If you're going to take their time. And just something that uh, Fantasy Stats Guru mentioned that uh, being smart often makes people awkward in social situations. They over-explain or explain it at a high level that the consumer just doesn't get. Yeah, and uh, Fast and the Furious 7 will be like, you know, the biggest movie of like the year, whereas, you know, incredible actors who are making beautiful, and there's nothing wrong with that movie, but it's, 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 it's simple. It's yeah. the brevity of the expression. Gosh, I I it's simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. People I deal with this, this lowest common denominator, and it's boobs, explosions, gunpowder, car crashes. Everybody gets that. How about us? How about tight butts for straight women? Sure, yeah, yeah. I love <laughs> it. boobs aren't going to do yeah, much yeah, for yeah, me. But, 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 but the point is, it, 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 it's, it's these bare minimum physical things, and then you go see a Daniel Day-Lewis movie, which is genius, and you're just like, that makes me go home and think. And people don't want to think. Really? No, they want to just feel good and have popcorn and go to sleep and then take Pepto-Bismol. That's what they want to do. They Believe want- it or not, that's what human beings really, really want. When you look at really what's really, really popular, that's because that is the, everyone talks about how health food is such a big deal. Yeah, how come there's no major huge you know, chains, you know, restaurant chains that serve health food? Why is McDonald's, God, I wish there was. Why is McDonald's number one? Because people like chicken McNuggets. And anybody who says they, do, they don't <laughs> is kidding themselves. <laughs> they personally might not, but the society as a whole, they freaking love them. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, uh, Lori loved the deal, and yeah. she loved uh, Ben's little cool. Scooper Bowl, and she offered him, um, she, yeah, I'll give you $75,000 for 33 and a third percent. Now, uh, Tyler, like, hesitated a little, and it pissed her off. You know, I could see her seething, yeah. because she's like, you have to say yes now. And he just sat there going, hmm, and the other sharks the were like, I'll make it easy on you. World. No, no, no. I mean, I would have left and said oh, yeah. yes now. And, of course, um... Uh, he he countered with a royalty deal. He's like, would you they consider a royalty deal where I'll give you a dollar for each one of these Scooper Bowls? And she's like, no, because you've only sold 200. That was like a Yeah, it'll take deal. like 16 years to get my money back. Yeah, oh, <laughs> she would have to work very hard, and yeah. she was uh, ready. But you to- partner up, and the thing is, you incentivize them to work hard, too. See, when you give somebody very little interest in your business, they're going to have very little interest in your business. Oh, okay. When you give somebody a lot of interest in your right. business, guess what? Money and equity <laughs> is like manure. You pile it up and it stinks. You spread it out and stuff starts to starts to grow. That's awesome. Yeah, and so you got to do that. Um, so what are you doing right now? That's very exciting because we do have to wrap it up. Um, oh yes, a kiss method. Keep it simple, stupid. Says says Ben, fantasy scat, uh, fantasy stats guru. So he is agreeing with you. But good, because I agree but too. But please let us know where can we find you? What are you up to? What's exciting and new? Because um, people are there was a lot of people, and I'm sorry I didn't get to everybody in the chat. There was a big chat and a lot of people talking to you. So there, everyone was excited. So if what do we, where can uh, we find? I you? have a free product that I give away right now called. Unlocking Relationships, unlockingrelationships.com. It's a free course, talks to you about how to magnify your relationships. I truly believe that the key to business is not knowing everything, it's knowing how to work the relationships because it takes a team to make stuff happen. These people that we idealize in, in, in media, you know, these Tony Starks of the world, these guys right. don't exist. The reality of it is, is that most people require a lot of team and support around to make it happen. I can barely do anything. I'm practically an idiot, right? But <laughs> I, I understand relationships, so I know how to help other really smart people help me get what I want. And so unlockingrelationships.com, you can check that out. Are you also having a sh- Is there a show coming up? I know you always uh, have yeah. so many different working projects. On a, work, yeah, working on, on a television show here in Los Angeles. That's why I'm here. Okay, awesome. And where, what's your basic website where people just can reach out or uh, just learn more about uh, you? NateState.com or uh, if you can spell my last name, NateHoltzfeld.com. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, we really appreciate you coming in tonight. Oh, um, you can. It's awesome. Yeah, Fun to be absolutely. here. absolutely. And thank you so much for joining us. And do join us next week. Uh, Zoe and Chris, perhaps, will be back by missing team members with explanations. Um, thank you guys so much. Please do reach out to us on Instagram or Twitter. This is Constance Dunn. Have an awesome night. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.